Now that we practiced our blending, we can actually start painting something. Um, this is the image we're going to work from. I've already done the drawing. Before I start painting, though, I need to add two more very important additional pieces of information to my drawing in order to help me paint. The first thing I've already actually done. I in indicated the shape of the cast shadows. So that's going to be here and here. The second thing I haven't done, and it is to indicate where my objects are lit and where they're in shadow. So you can see that the sphere has this kind of crescent-like shadow running across it. I'm going to draw a line there. And then I can see that the cylinder is lighter here, and then on this side, there's also a shadow. I'm going to indicate it. The more I work out in the drawing stage, the less I have to think in the painting stage, the easier my painting process is going to go. So try to do all your compositional decisions and try to think about all of your drawing decisions in the drawing stage. That's going to free up your brain to paint better. So I'm also going to indicate the cast shadow here, like this. You don't want to be making these kind of decisions when you paint. You have enough to think about already when it comes to blending. Okay? So always, when you paint, before you do, before you start painting, indicate the cast shadows of what you want to paint and indicate the light breaks. That's really, really, really important. Okay. Um, now, some of you might be looking at this and thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Well, not that it's super easy. It's going to take a little bit of practice. But basically what we have is a series of value scales. We have a value scale that goes darker here, lighter this way, and then gradually getting darker this way. We've got a value scale here, darker to lighter. Right? We have a value scale here, lighter to darker. Value scale. Everything's a little bit of a value scale, and really just about everything in this painting can be knocked out using our wet into wet process. So let's start working wet into wet. Here is the principle when you're painting. Everyone listening? Big to small, background to foreground. So you want to get rid of the biggest elements in your composition, the things that are occupying the most amount of space. And then, generally speaking, you want to work background to the objects that are closer and closer and closer to you. The reason we do that is, re is really simple. Uh, imagine for a second, here's a thought experiment, that you're painting a tree against a blue background. Which would you do first? Would you paint the tree first and then paint the blue sky in between the branches? Or would you paint the blue sky and then paint the tree on top? Well, obviously the second, right? Uh, you'd be really silly to paint the tree first and then be forced to paint blue in between all the leaves, the branches. Now, the result ultimately might be kind of the same, but the amount of work involved would be vastly different, right? So in painting, you're always trying to think a few steps ahead and always thinking about what is the most efficient, effective process for painting that object. And the thing that keeps painting interesting, even in these kind of simple exercises, is working those things out, thinking a couple of steps ahead. Painting is a little bit like chess. You know, what five, six steps do I need to take in order to arrive at the solution to the problem, arrive at the painting that I want? OK, so background to foreground, big to small. The biggest thing in the composition is the background, and it's also in the background, which is good. Uh, that's convenient. Uh, let's premix a bunch of values. So we're going to premix. Well, something actually looks like this, right? Similar. Then it goes a little bit lighter here, and then gradually going darker this way. Premix a little bit more paint than you think you need, always. So we've got a darker gray here. You guys can see this. Is that on camera? Okay, it is. Okay. And by the way, you don't have to have separate values. I can create a value string. So a value not continuum, whatever that word is. A little bit lighter here. Squeeze out a little bit more white. By the way, even though I'm using a stay wet palette and my paints are going to stay wet. Squeeze out a little bit of paint at a time. Right, so be thrifty with your paint. Don't waste it. Right? Because if I squeeze out a big tube, like 
this big blob of paint, the top is going to dry. Right, the bottom is going to stay wet, but uh, the top is going to dry. And then uh, it also helps, uh, particularly if you're using a dry palette, to have your little spray bottle and to spritz down your painting, your paints every once in a while, just to keep them from drying. They're going to dry anyway. Um, don't spritz too much. Your paint is going to start washing away. Okay, lighter here, and then coming back to darker. Right? And even a little bit darker towards the corner. By the way, it should be mentioned that painting from photographs is not an ideal way to learn to paint. Uh, however, um, we're going to do it for this class. Your homework assignments you can do either from photograph or from direct observation. That's going to be up to you. Right? Uh, but I recommend direct observation. Um, okay. So uh, let's start off with this kind of, that should be darker, right? Okay, looks good. Use your large brush. This is my half inch brush. And let's put in that really simple value transition going this way. So wet into wet, you have to work fast. You have to work relatively quickly. But the good thing is we're doing something fairly simple. This is a really simple background transition. We can knock it out really quickly. And the benefit of putting the background down first is that we don't have to be terribly careful about not ruining our sphere. Right, the sphere is going to go on top. Okay, let's go a little bit lighter here. It actually should be lighter now that I'm painting. Just adding a little bit more water to my paint, dilute it. Okay. Don't worry if the value isn't exactly right. You'll adjust it. You'll adjust it. So right now, what we're doing is just kind of blocking in the general values of the painting. If there's something wrong, or things aren't going light or dark enough, we'll go over it again. No worries. Paint really thin at the beginning. Paint really thin, and then as you get a little more confident, you can start painting a little bit thicker. Acrylic can be used lots of different ways. Uh, it can be really gloopy, blobby, you can really show off the brush strokes. However, uh, regardless of what the final look is going to be in the painting, I recommend starting off with thin applications of paint just to figure out what you're doing at the beginning. Again, this is where having a gesso surface really, really helps. I would not be able to do this on an unprimed surface, right? Uh, the paint would be dry almost instantly, or at least tacky almost instantly. I try to do as much of the painting using wet and wet. Right, uh, it's just the fastest method. Um, as you get better with painting, you can pull off more of it using the wet into wet method. Uh, most beginners will tend to gravitate towards the other methods. They're just easier. They're slower, but you have more control. Right, so quite often dry brush is used at the beginning. And beginners really love dry brush because. It's easy. 
it's easy, it's slow, you can really take your time, build up the values, create smooth transitions. Once you get a little more confident, I think you'll find that wet into wet is just faster, just more efficient. Okay, there's my background. If the paint's still wet, let's see if it is. Maybe I'll go in and go a little bit lighter here. Um, I'm working in the morning. The conditions are a little humid, uh, which gives me a little more time to work. Uh, if this was later in the day, I probably might not be able to do this. Uh, by the way, don't work in direct sunlight. Uh, that's just silly. First of all, you can't see your painting accurately, and then the paint's going to dry instantly. right? <clears throat> okay, so there is my background. It might be a little bit streaky at the beginning, uh, but look, uh, particularly here, I need to go a little bit darker, I need to go a little bit darker here. I'll make those adjustments later. I will, I promise. Um, okay. Now, let's get the table. Also another big wet into wet transition. Right, so it's a little bit darker here, gets a little bit lighter this way, and darker again. Let's do that. By the way, I, I just went right over my exercises. You can do the same. Uh, if the exercises are kind of bothering you, then just throw another layer of gesso on top. You can always do that. Look, you can always reuse your painting surfaces in acrylic. That's not the case with oil, by the way. Um, if you're working oil paint, you basically have to start a whole fresh painting. Uh, start on a fresh surface, painting surface. With acrylic, you can just re-gesso. Okay, uh, let's go a little bit lighter here. Okay, so I should have pre-mixed my values. I didn't. I don't always follow my rules. You should do it though, uh, because again, uh, it's gonna speed up your painting process when you're doing wet into wet, and give you a little more time to move the paint around as opposed to trying to blend, trying to create your mixtures. Okay, so it's going a little bit darker here. And by the way, look, uh, if your surface is looking a little streaky, you can always go over it again. Uh, the second coat will look a little smoother. However, uh, that's not really something you should be stressing too much over because, look, acrylic has a certain look to it. It's not going to be perfectly smooth. There's always going to be some kind of brush strokes, uh, a little bit of regularity. That's just the way the paint looks like. If you want something that's perfectly smooth, use an airbrush, use a computer. Right? Uh, acrylic is its own medium, it has its own look to it. Uh, smoothness is not always the objective in a painting, and quite often it makes the painting look kind of boring, frankly. Uh, okay, so I've got my transitions. Uh, unfortunately, my light source is directly above my painting. Okay, but you guys can see this, right? Yes? Okay, all right. All right, uh, now let's tackle our objects. Uh, once again, we just have a bunch of really simple value transitions. Uh, by the way, always clean off your brushes immediately after you're done painting. So here, I'm gonna put this right here. Here's my water. Clean off your brush. You don't have to clean it completely. And then dab it off and just let it rest on its side like this. Never do this. Resist the urge. I do it sometimes. It's really lazy. Uh, the problem is that if you leave your brush in the water for a long period of time, the hairs are going to start to curve. And so your brushes are going to go from straight to kind of like this. Right? They're going to have a curvature to them. Um, don't do that. Save your brushes. Do them like this. While you're painting, just rinsing them off is really enough. 
when you're done painting, use soap and water and really do a good cleaning job. Make sure you get the paint out of the bottom here because that's where it has a tendency to build up little by little by little by little and eventually your, your brush turns into a stick. Okay. So uh, we're going to be using another wet into wet transition. Um, we're going to use a slightly smaller brush to do this, however, uh, because it just gives me a little bit more control. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we need to premix a couple of values, darker here and a little bit lighter here. Um, always when you're rendering objects with a light side and a shadow side, start off with a shadow. It's going to make the object clear in your painting and make it easier to paint. All right, so we've got a cube. It's lit from this direction. It's lighter here, darker here. Start by doing the shadow. Squeeze out a little more white. You see how I'm going through a lot of white, and I've squeezed out the black at the beginning of the the demo and I have a need to re-squeeze it, right? So you see how much more white I'm using than the black? Okay, that's why I want you guys to get a big tube of white. Go through white really fast. Okay, so um, it's darker here and then gradually getting lighter this way. Pre-mix a bunch of value. So darker here, and then little by little, lighter towards the back. <clears throat> the good thing about the Stay Wet palette, besides the fact that the paint stays wet, um, it dilutes the paint a little bit. It makes it a little bit thinner, which also increases the drying time. Um, if you're using a regular palette, which is perfectly fine, again, um, you might need to add a little bit of water to your paint to get at this consistency. <clears throat> you want to be careful how much paint, how much water you add, however. Uh, how do you know you've added too much water? When the paint loses the ability to hold its stroke. So you can keep adding water to it. This paint is relatively thin, but you can see that it doesn't spread. Okay, so you can keep adding water to it until it starts spreading. How do you know you've added too much water when it no longer holds a stroke, right? Do you see that? Okay, this is turning into watercolor. It's starting to kind of spread out a little bit. Okay, so be careful how much water you add. You can add a lot, but make sure it holds the brush stroke. Okay, so I shouldn't have done that while I was painting because I don't want any corners to form But look, if they do, I'll just go over this whole thing again. Not a big deal. And quite often, look, your first application of paint is a little bit streaky. It might not be exactly right. Look, it, there might be some mistakes in terms of just value. That happens quite often because right now we're putting down value sort of in isolation. I'm kind of guessing at what the values are here at this point. I won't know whether I've gotten them exactly right until I've got the value next to it. Value is relative. I don't know what one thing is, what one value is, until I have the value next to it. And it's only through comparing one value against the next and the next and the next, you actually get it right. So your first application of paint, the background, the table here, is going to be a little bit of an estimate. Once you have all the values down, then you can tinker with the values and make little fine adjustments. Okay, so let's do another value scale here. So it's going to be kind of a darker gray here and a little bit lighter towards the back.
look at because value is relative that is really the main reason why we're working with a toned ground if I was working with a white ground it would trick me into thinking that I'm going way too dark it's going to trick me into mixing a lot of white into the paint and by the end I'm going to get a really pale painting unless I'm really careful right, I'm really conscious of the fact that I'm being fooled that I'm working with a white ground and conversely if I start off with a really dark ground it would trick me into mixing all my values too dark and if I'm not careful I'll end up with a really dark painting now that might be something you want right? if you're doing some kind of dark dramatic illustration you might want to start off with a dark ground but for right now keep it exactly 50% gray by the way uh, these kind of corners they can be taped off that's the advantage of acrylic you can use a ruler so for instance I can do something like this right I and use it to guide guide my brush um, however you want to do it is perfectly legitimate okay uh, let's do the top of this thing Again, I'm painting kind of roughly I will make adjustments to my painting towards the end right clean up corners all that kind of stuff that's what your little pointy round brushes are for okay um, the cube is blocked in more or less some things will need to be adjusted later there's my cube all right uh, what else look uh, it's really up to you so I'm gonna try to be systematic I'm gonna put in my cast shadows right now um, let's do that so you can see these brushes the quarter inch brushes are going to be your workhorse brushes they're the ones you're going to be using the most Okay, so far we've been doing wet into wet. Here is our first opportunity to go wet into dry. So we've got a cast shadow here. And now we need to get a soft blend. Why am I using this paper towel? Okay. And let's do it. Using a little bit of water. there's our soft transition which you cannot see because there's a reflection let's take a look uh, can you guys see that yes okay there it is right here okay now uh, there needs to be some value adjustments within the cast shadow obviously uh, but um, there's your cast shadow uh, let's do the other one the other one's going a little bit darker actually a lot darker I block in the value and now I'm going to use wet into wet to create a value transition did I say wet into wet I meant wet, wet into dry a little bit of water a little bit of water Again, the first application is always going to be a little bit streaky, right? There's always going to be a little bit of transparency. We can see a little bit of the paint coming through. 
right? Up. You guys see that? Right? I'll go back into it, of course. Okay. Um, let's get the cast shadows. Let's get the sphere. So we've got a bunch of values, a bunch of different values in the cast shadow. Wet into wet as much as possible. Let's do the same thing for the cast shadow. Alright, uh, now let's tackle the cylinder I think you're going to be able to get, but uh, let's tackle the sphere. Let's do that. Okay, uh, anytime you have some kind of round volume that has a light and a shadow, you want to start off by mixing up an average value for the shadow and an average value for the light. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you look at the shadow value, there's a bunch of different values there. Right? We've got a core shadow. Hopefully you guys know what a core shadow is. We've got a reflected light right here. Right? We've got kind of a general shadow value. Mix up the middle. Mix up the middle value. That's going to be really, really, really important. Mix up the middle value. We're mixing up a value that represents sort of all the different values there put together. So it might be something like this. Then we're going to do the same thing for the light. The lighter part of the sphere has a couple of different values too. It has a highlight, it has a lighter area, it has a half tone. We're going to mix up an average that looks like this. Always start with the shadows. Always start with the shadows. Always start with the shadows. We're going to put down that shadow value. Let's go a little bit darker here. And then, before this dries, we're going to put in the lighter value and blend the two together using our wet into wet technique. This is the easiest way of creating a smooth transition between these two values. We can also use our other blending techniques. However, as a starting point, this is the fastest way to start. Now we're going to let this dry, and then once it's done drying, we're going to adjust it to make it more realistic, more three-dimensional. Okay, You're going to do the same thing for the cylinder. So we're going to pre-mix, so while this is drying, we'll tackle the cylinder a little bit. 
me just quickly make some adjustments here before this is completely dry. There we go. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see this. Here we go. Okay. So I got the transition between the shadows and lights out of the way. That's the more, most difficult aspect of getting that sphere. Now let's do the same thing for the cylinder. Let's do it. So we've got a relatively dark shadow there. Let's get that out of the way. So that's going to be my average shadow. Okay, now let's quickly go in and put in the average light. Okay, so look, we have most of the painting blocked in. What's missing? Okay, we've got at the beginning, right? So get rid of the gray tone. Uh, that will allow you to see the painting early on in its early rounded brush, little round brush for that. Not focusing so much on detail, just kind of blocking it in. Okay, uh, let's work a little more on the sphere. Let's take a look at the sphere. What's missing? Well, uh, this shape might need to be adjusted a little bit. This is true. I think probably... Just put my hand in my painting. Don't do that. We can adjust it to be a little bit more round. By the way, feel free to rotate your painting. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, for that, we need to match the background a little bit. Okay, now let's finish this sphere. I'm going to take my small flat brush and start putting in the coarse shadow. You can work wet into dry or dry brush, whatever you want to do. If you're going to go wet into dry, make sure the surface underneath is actually dry. Otherwise, it's going to be a disaster. So basically never paint on semi-dry surfaces. That's a mistake. Okay, now we need to blend that a little bit. Let's use my wet into dry method. Okay, that's the one I prefer for detail, the wet into dry. 
Oh, I just dropped my brush. Oy. Okay. And now I'm going to paint a little bit of the reflected light. That's going to be this area right here. here. Okay, so obviously I can adjust things here. I need to go into the corner. Let's use my little detail brush for that. Okay, uh, oof, this is wrong. Now that I'm seeing it, this needs to go all the way in here, like that. Again, the great thing about acrylic is that I can make instant adjustments. Though, I guess no oily can do that too. You have to wipe it off. In watercolor, you wouldn't be able to do that. So there. Okay. All right, now we need to do the same thing with the lighter area. So we've got this kind of average color, average, not color, average value. We need to start going a little bit lighter here and then working our way up to the highlight. Let's do that. Let's go a little bit lighter here. So right now I'm actually working wet into wet. I put down a value and then I'm going to go into it to go lighter and lighter and lighter to get my blending. And let's plop in the highlight. Let's do that. There's my sphere. Again, uh, I need to adjust a little bit. I need to finesse this a little bit. But I think, I think, you should have the idea at this point. Um, OK, so I'm going to keep working on this. Uh, and then when I'm done, I'll take a photo and show you the final result. Okay, so, uh, this might be difficult for you. All right, uh, practice, do your best. Um, then next week, you're going to upload this assignment. I'll take a look at it. I'll help you if you have any kind of technical difficulties. So uh, this is going to be more of a process than anything. So we're going to upload. I'm going to help you. You're going to go back, work on the painting a little more. 
uh, make the adjustments that I advise if if there are any kind of problems. Um, not the most interesting thing to paint, I, I realize. I understand. However, uh, I think this is a really useful technical exercise to get you, again, familiarized with the medium so that when you start tackling more difficult subject matter, you're going to be able to do it. Just to show you that uh, I can make adjustments here after. So again, try to finish this painting as much as possible. So extra credit for little bumps, scratches, if you can put them in. There's that little piece of dirt over here in the corner. Uh, it's not in my composition, but you know, try to do it. Um, most importantly, don't leave any area flat. You notice that in this image, there's absolutely no area where there's no value transition. So there's going to be value transitions absolutely everywhere absolutely everywhere in the cast shadows here right there there's some kind of value transitions right, it's going darker here lighter there right uh, make sure you put all of those things in Okay, so that's the demo. Be back later with the finished product to show you what degree of finish I'm expecting. Okay. Okay, I worked on this a little bit more. The painting's not entirely done, but look, really in painting, the amount of detail you put in is kind of up to you. Um, I'm going to try to finish it to a slightly higher degree of execution. Um, as you start working towards completion, you can start using thinner and thinner and more and more transparent paint to make adjustments. So if you think that a transition is perhaps a little bit too rough, we need to adjust a value. You can start applying kind of like these haze-like washes of semi-transparent paint to make little subtle adjustments in value. So now, it's hard to tell, but I'm thinning down the paint and pushing values around a little bit darker towards this corner. The technical term for this is glazing and scumbling. Glazing and scumbling. Glazing is when you put a darker color or value over something that's lighter in a transparent, semi-transparent way. So once again, anytime I apply a transparent dark, over something that was lighter, that's called glazing. Scumbling is the same thing, but you're using a lighter value on top of a darker value. Um, basically, they're just two ways of nudging things around, moving things around and making little value adjustments. So for instance, like this top corner here, I notice that it needs to go a little bit darker. Instead of physically mixing that value, putting it down, I can clean my brushes better because I didn't and mix up some kind of transparent semi-transparent wash and make a little value adjustment. This is only done towards the end of your painting, towards the, the finish line. Okay, don't start glazing and or scumbling until you get to something that's very very close to completion because in both cases those techniques are meant to nudge they're meant to make little adjustments so we start working on color uh, glazing and scumbling are usually done to okay lighten or darken a value but also sometimes just to nudge the saturation of a color right just to push a color a little bit brighter or a little bit duller or let's say to send something further back in space by cooling it down and desaturating it um, kind of introducing atmospheric perspective which we'll talk about later maybe i'm getting ahead of myself okay uh, the other thing is um, as i finish i'm going to use my smaller and smaller brushes so really this is the time to start whipping out your little round and putting in 
little tiny details like this. Extra credit for this kind of stuff, by the way. Um, okay, that was a joke. Uh, try to finish the painting as much as you can. You know, even stuff like this. Yeah, the scratches. I'm using transparent paint here. Right, uh, washes to create that little grainy texture. I think that sphere originally was just a, a bowling ball, if I'm not mistaken. All right, now I can do the same thing with semi-transparent lighter values. So for instance, to apply a little bit of texture to the highlight, I'm going to use a little bit of scumbling. Okay, I'm going to do something unorthodox. Your fingers are actually pretty good blending tools, believe it or not. Little highlights. Okay, um, I'm not going to bore you guys anymore. Um, get to painting. Try to bring this to the highest level of finish that you can. Um, look, I realize it's going to be difficult. Do not seek perfection. If you run into problems, email me through the week with a clear photo of your image so that I can give you feedback. Um, and then upload it next week and I'll take a look at it. Everybody, make sure that your photos are high resolution, please. Uh, don't send me distorted photos, don't send me low resolution photos, photos with poor lighting. Um, the main problem, as I see it in this class, is the feedback element. right? Uh, the fact that you're somewhere else and I can't look behind your from behind your shoulder and see what you're doing and stop your mistakes immediately. Um, and then I can't really see your paintings. So um, we're going to try to overcome this as much as possible but it's going to be up to you to send really high resolution images so that I can see what's going on. So I can fix technical problems before they become horrible habits that are difficult to undo. Um, so you guys have to really meet me more than halfway when it comes to images. Uh, make sure the images are high resolution. You really have to do that because otherwise I can't tell what's, what's going on. You send me something blurry, I don't know. Um, okay, what else can I have to, do I have to tell you? Um, look, again, not the most interesting thing to paint, but by practicing your three different blending techniques on this little black and white painting, it's going to set you up for the next assignment, which is going to be much more interesting, hopefully.